Hello, this is Dr. Mark Mervali with MaryCast. You know, there's a, there's a basic human appropriateness about acknowledging when someone has deeply suffered on your behalf. Uh, we honor heroes, firefighters for risking their life, uh, for preventing harm's way from attacking a citizen, uh, cases of people risking their lives uh, to save an individual, uh, in, in several walks of society, it, it's, it's, a, it's a common sense thing that we show gratitude by recognition, by acknowledgement when someone has suffered on our behalf. This is why the Church honors Our Lady with the celebration of the Seven Sorrows of Mary, and even beyond uh, a liturgical feast, which is once a year, September 15th, the ongoing honoring and pondering of the role of Mary with and under Jesus in the redemption of humanity. These seven sorrows are seven high points of Our Lady's role as the co-redemptrix. So the first sorrow is the presentation of the infant Jesus to the temple, where we have an explicit biblical reference, uh, Simeon saying to Mary that her son would be a sign of contradiction and her heart too would be pierced. This is a, a, an explicit reference of the suffering of Mary in Scripture. And then the flight of the Holy Family into Egypt, where Mary has to leave her homeland in protection of her child. The third sorrow is the loss of the child Jesus in the temple for three days, where for three days Mary is separated from her child, which is in, in a prophecy, a foreshadowing of what will happen at Calvary between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And the last Four sorrows deal with Mary and Jesus at Calvary, where the fourth sorrow is the way of the cross, when Mary and Jesus glance at each other and there's an awareness that they're fulfilling the mission of the Father. The new Adam and the new Eve are correcting the errors of the first Adam and Eve by their joint cooperation in fulfilling the mission of the Father. And the fifth sorrow is the crucifixion, where, as Blessed John Paul II summarizes brilliantly, Mary is spiritually crucified. Everything that happens in the body or the heart of Jesus is experienced in the heart of Mary. This is the teachings of the Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, 58, uh, Lumen Gentium 58, where Mary experiences the intensity of his suffering in her heart, and that Mary lovingly consents to the immolation of the victim born of her. That means Mary not only endures Calvary, she says yes to Calvary. She says yes to the immolation of her son so that we could become sons and daughters. The sixth sorrow is the sorrow of Jesus, the body of Jesus being taken down from the cross. At that point, Mary can more fully express the full pains of her motherly heart because up to that point, it was the Stabat Mater. It was the mother standing. It was the mother suffering with Jesus in an expression of unified courage. After Jesus is dead, uh, she can more fully express the, the depths of sorrow of a mother's heart. And then the seventh sorrow is being laid in the tomb. Jesus is laid in the tomb. From a human perspective, it looks like total failure. The Messiah has not saved his people. The people have killed their Messiah. With the eyes of faith, it's the ultimate victory. The consummatum rest, it is finished, will lead, and is the foundation for the resurrection both in the life of Jesus and Mary and in our lives. That's why it's so important that we ponder the sorrows of Mary, that we acknowledge that these are realities of human suffering which will assist us in our sufferings. But it's also why the sufferings, the unique sufferings of Mary with Jesus must be acknowledged. You know, once again, sometimes power is released by a profession of faith. We see this in Scripture several times. For example, with the institution of the papacy. Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? Simon says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Only with that proclamation is power given to Simon to become the first pope. The office of papacy. You are Peter. On this rock I will build my church. This is the same principle, principle my friends, about why it's so important that Our Lady's sorrows are proclaimed by the Pope. That with the proclamation of her role as co-redemptrix and her consequential roles of distributing grace as mediatrix and her role as our principal advocate, only with the proclamation of this will the power be released by the Father 
for the full exercise, the enacting, the activating of these roles of intercession. My friends, it's, it's gravely important. I want to read to you, this is from May 31st, 1954, from the approved, the church approved messages of the Lady of All Nations, given approval by the local bishop, May 31st, 2002. Our Lady says, quote, From now on, all nations will call me blessed. The Lady of All Nations desires unity in the Holy Spirit of truth. The world is encompassed by a false spirit, Satan. When the dogma, the last dogma in Marian history, has been proclaimed, the Lady of All Nations will give peace, true peace, to the world. The nations, however, must say my prayer in union with the Church. They must know that the Lady of All Nations has come as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. So be it. These are the words of Our Lady to you and to me. We have action to do. We, we have cooperation to do. We're called to be co-workers with God and co-workers with Mary. What are we supposed to do? First of all, we're supposed to pray that prayer. If you will call us or email us, we will send you the prayer free of charge, regardless of where in the world you are. Uh, this is important. Our Lady has, has said, whoever or whatever you are, I ask you to pray this simple prayer daily. So, the prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disaster, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. That's the prayer Our Lady wants you to pray, and me, every day. To get the prayer, call us. 740, this is a number for the United States, 740-937-2277. 740-937-2277. Or you can email us, mary at motherofallpeoples.com. Just tell us your name and address, how many prayer cards you want. We'll send them to you free of charge. The second thing Our Lady asks is that we petition the Holy Father. These are children encouraging a father to do something that heaven has asked for. It's not a power play. It's not a pressure play. It's done with obedience. But canon law itself says that we are obliged as members of the faith to let our Holy Father know, to let the pastors of the church know of something important in our minds and hearts. Peace is important, my friends. And you just heard Our Lady's words, only with this proclamation will the power come. Only with the proclamation will Our Lady be able to fully exercise these roles to bring peace to the world. Look at the headlines, look at the realities of family life, look at the moral degeneration, look at the natural disasters, look at the Middle East, look at the wars and the rumors of wars. We need heaven's help. And so that's our task. So I ask you to do these two things because Our Lady has asked us all to do these two things. Number one, pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. Get the prayer card from us. Or, or you can just get it online as well. You don't, certainly don't have to get it from us. It's all free of charge. 740-937-2277 or mary at motherofallpeoples.com Secondly, petition the Holy Father. Uh, you can write him a letter, Pope Benedict the 16th, 00120, Vatican City. From your heart, why you think now is the time that you support him in this, that, that Our Lady has asked for it, and that you will in a certain sense proclaim it with him in, 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 in the expression of your support. Or you can do an online petition, mary at motherofallpeoples.com or fifthmaryandogma.com. My friends, peacefully but with a resolve, let's cooperate. Let's give Our Lady the fiat she needs to bring us the peace we want in marriages, in families, in neighborhoods, in society throughout the world. Let's tap heaven's graces for peace and redemption. This is Dr. Mark Mervali saying thanks for being with us. God bless you.